These girls became a very tight family over the years. They depended on each other. My sources tell me when one was punished, they disobeyed, they were punished. They were not given dinner or lunch or any food at all. The other girls, the other two girls would sneak that girl food so she could stay alive. Where I'm right now is it's about a hundred yards away from the airport property where the plane took off behind me right there by that utility shed and the red fire hydrant. That's where the crash happened. Investigators have now moved that away to location to study that. But I do want everyone to know who know these four men who perished. Neighbors in this area tried to rescue them. They were trapped inside but they couldn't get past the flames. Let me tell you, security is pretty tight here. We got this gentleman right here who is actually moving us um, over here. You can see he's actually now pushing me over out of the way. We wanted to show you the red carpet in the tent that we showed you at four o'clock, but hey, that's all right. We're okay. And you know, people are heading into the casino because, well, he's now stopped following me because they want to cash in on the horseshoe. The house right over my shoulder, you can see really nothing left, but across the street, there's still remnants of what it used to be. You've got some crown molding right here. Take a look at this. This used to be a window. Hi, Sergeant Carson. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Fine. I'm Scott Taylor with 19 Action News. Can you tell me what you've been doing in the last three hours back in the woods? No, I've been on patrol, thank you. No, you haven't. You've actually, can you wait? Can you wait I for a second? Can't. You've no, been I sleeping can't. back there. I want to ask you some questions. Can you stop, sir? Can we, uh, can you you know what, we've, you we've got a couple of things going on right now. Okay. Okay. Sir, Scott, this is a private private. Hold it. That's Whirlpool CEO Jeff Fedick's PR machine quickly building a wall of silence in the lobby of a downtown Detroit hotel between their $12 million man and 19 Action News. Talk to you about positive things. You're more than happy to talk to us on camera. When there's issues, you you run from us. You run it from the camera. From you at all. Yeah. Well, then answer my question. Now I really need your help. Go to our website. Look for Alexa Brown's picture on the front page. I put together a special petition that asks for a federal investigation into what's really happening here in Clyde, Ohio. So far, more than 500 of you have signed up. We need a lot more. Excuse me, Dr. Sanders. Excuse me. Thank you. Mr. Dr. Sanders, I'd like to talk to you. I don't know why this gentleman's blocking me. I'm Scott Taylor with 19 Action News. Wow, that's Ron Kisner, the school district's chief of communications. He's playing offensive lineman for his boss. A mom and her daughter found dead inside this house in Ashtabula. It doesn't get any worse than this. The Cuyahoga Land Bank is taking properties like this that are all boarded up and changing them into brand new renovated homes. I figure we've got two big questions here. Question number one, do you actually believe these guys? Question number two, will LeBron's mom, Gloria James, actually believe any of this. The car lost control somewhere up the road. It hit this embankment here and then came all the way up here, hit the bridge, caught on fire, and it appears the driver's keys, well, they're still here and all melted together, but take a look at his car. Everybody listening pretty well, but there's one knucklehead or two who stop. They're on their cell phone and the police come up and say, hey, Get off your cell phone. Move on, move on. Scott Taylor, 19 Action News. Three women killed. Today, the prime suspect makes an appearance in court. So, how does he feel? I've been better. 19 Action News with new developments on the serial murders. Today, we're delving into the mind of accused serial killer Michael Madison. At noon, investigative reporter Scott Taylor was the first to show us pictures of Madison's car. He joins us now with more exclusive inside information. Scott? Investigators tell me they found a shovel and plastic bags inside the trunk of Michael Madison's car. I have the pictures right here to prove it, along with exclusive video of the car and new details that some think this guy didn't act alone. You're getting an exclusive look at Michael Madison's death mobile. Police believe he used his Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme found in his garage to grab his victims. The victim's body was on the left side of the, uh, the vehicle here. East Cleveland Police Detective Scott Gardner tells me Madison, during his three days of interrogation, was articulate, intelligent, and even polite, but he rambled. They also think he might have had help. We're getting continued tips uh, on a pretty regular basis that uh, Michael Madison and perhaps somebody else 
uh, would abduct girls in this vehicle. I was the first to show you exclusive photos of what police found inside Madison's trunk of his car. When we opened the, uh, the trunk, there was essentially some uh, additional garbage bags. Uh, there was a brand new spade shovel. We now know all three victims, Sherelda Terry, Angela Deskins, and Shatisa Sheely were wrapped in black plastic bags. On day two of questioning, Madison confessed to killing a woman last year and admitted to dumping 18-year-old Sherelda Terry's body in his garage. At his arraignment, Madison pled not guilty to 14 charges, including murder, rape, and kidnapping. When you look inside with these pictures, it looks like he's put everything in order. Yes, that's, that's how we took it as well. Yeah, almost that he's going to go to work, spend the day at work with this stuff, and if he needs it, he can pull it out and use it. Yes. Of course, Michael Madison, innocent until proven guilty. Now, here's how you can help the police. Please call 1-800-CALL-FBI. 1-800-CALL-FBI. If you have seen Madison's Oldsmobile anywhere, the FBI is trying to track down if there are more victims. Now, coming up at 5, Michael Madison drove another vehicle. We are working on showing you that car at 5 o'clock. Scott Taylor, 19 Action News. How big is your gym? Oh, don't have one? Well, some Cuyahoga County judges do, and they say it's too small. So, guess who's paying for more equipment? 19 Action News with the exclusive investigation on these workout whiners. Yeah, wouldn't it be great to have a free place to work out? Some judges get that perk, but should your tax dollars grant their wish for a bigger gym? Scott Taylor breaking this story in a 19 Action News exclusive. Court officials won't talk on camera, but at first told me, Scott, no way, we don't have a second gym. Well, 15 minutes later, they call me back and say, oh, we found it. We do have a second gym. Taxpayers spent 180 million bucks to build the Cuyahoga County Juvenile Justice Center that opened in October of 2011. This place is beautiful. Marble floors, paintings, big conference rooms, and even a gym on the ninth floor for county workers to work up a sweat. Hold it, a gym? Hard to believe, but hold on to your hats, everybody. I just discovered this gym isn't big enough. That's right, the court administration wants to open up a second gym on the same floor. I discovered their plans, and at first, court officials denied it after I paid them a visit. After I left, they called me back and said, you got to come back, Scott. We found the second gym. It's still under construction, three times as big. They already have used workout equipment in it, and take a look at the view. The question I have, hey, taxpayer, do you approve because you're paying for it? And I'm guessing most of you at home don't have a gym pass anywhere. They also have another problem. Remember that teen inmate I told you about who they let go home for the holidays? He never came back. And by the way, he's still on the loose. Scott Taylor, 19 Action News. School safety, a big concern these days, but a 19 Action News investigation just uncovered a shocking security gap, leaving one building and hundreds of students wide open. On the heels of recent school attacks, districts are promising parents that their kids are safe, but today we're exposing a major security flaw at a local high school. Scott Taylor has the exclusive 19 Action News investigation. Can, can you, you can you explain to me why this door is wide open Sir? and you don't have any security? 19 Action News Undercover exposing a huge lack of security at John F. Kennedy High School in Cleveland, an unlocked side door located in one of the toughest neighborhoods in the city. We watch for an hour starting at 6.30 in the morning, one after another, people walking up the stairs and inside the high school. My sources tell me this door has been unlocked for months. Anybody could walk in and hide waiting to attack. No buzzer to get in, no security guard, not even a teacher monitoring the door. Then we decide to walk into the school and students are already in the halls. Excuse me, can we help you? Excuse me! Someone yells out from the parking lot, but would that stop a madman with a gun? Where's your office? We walk right by a teacher and make it all the way to the office until security stops us. You have metal detectors here in security, but anybody can come in on the side Sir, door. Is this the type of security you want in your schools? No one can forget Sandy Hook. Remember Columbine? Not to mention the deadly attack right here in Cleveland at Success Tech 
and in Chardon. But you have Sorry, an unsecured saying, door. Can you please contact the Are you going to fix that? Are you going to put security office? at that door? Nobody answering my questions at the school, but within minutes after we entered the school, the side door was locked and guards were posted. Scott Taylor, 19 Action News. Now officials with the Cleveland Municipal School District tell us that side door is supposed to be locked at all times and they thanked 19 Action News for bringing it to their attention. And meantime, three kids dead in a small town and more than 30 other children are sick. Investigator Scott Taylor is asking what's killing their children. It's another 19 Action News exclusive. I'm not afraid. I'm not a 14 mile stretch from Clyde, Ohio into Fremont, a death zone for kids. We call it the Clyde Cancer Cluster. So far, 35 children who live here have been attacked by cancer, including this little girl, Alexa Brown. That is her father, Warren. And this is tough to watch. What did she have? Brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it? I'm so sorry. It's okay. Actually, it's not okay. It sucks. Cole Keller turned six and then died. We've had three kids that have died from it. We have. Uh, it's over 30 now, and the, the circle has gotten bigger. In 2007, state officials told parents, what's causing this is our number one priority. The state still has no idea. The state has spent just over $90,000 in testing. That's $2,300 per kid. Come on, $2,300 per kid with cancer? With all due respect, you understand parents would say, listen, Chris, you made it your number one priority in 2008. Now it's 2010, almost 2011. You haven't been successful. We haven't been successful in finding the cause. And I think the parents are frustrated by that. Could the cause be Clyde's largest manufacturer, Whirlpool? The state says no. I know Whirlpool dumps 250 tons of volatile organic compounds a year into the air. Ohio EPA says most are non-toxic, most. Companies have been building things here since the 1800s. Since 99, Whirlpool has removed 611 tons of hazardous soil from this site. The state never tested the dirt. Is it a time to, for you though, for your department, for the state to give up and maybe bring somebody else in, the CDC, the federal government, some people who ha might have more expertise? than you and make those calls and bring some more people in? I don't think so. Whirlpool's $12 million a year CEO, Jeff Fettig, won't answer my questions on camera, even though the guy was in Clyde last month. Whirlpool says we've fully cooperated with various agencies and no root causes have been determined. We continue to work with the Ohio EPA. When I tried to videotape the plan in Clyde, Whirlpool security made it clear they didn't want me near the place. Just let them continue. Well, you can't stop us. Just yeah, stay out there watch and make sure they don't belong on full property. Are you going to put us in handcuffs and, cart us, and try to cart us away, sir? The state's lead investigator is stumped. The probability we're going to come up with what I call an aha for you is extremely thin. However, we owe it to these kids to give it an honest effort. And I think the record clearly shows we've given it that honest effort. His wife the Heisey family, now part of the cancer cluster. 12-year-old Tanner is fighting for his life. ALL leukemia. 17-year-old Tyler almost died. I don't think any kid should go through this. These kids are the living faces of this cancer mystery. Everything's just really, really stressful. I want to be honest with you, I can see the pain in your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. It hurts. It hurts. You know, it's just every day you're dealing with it and, you know, and every day we're going to deal with this the rest of our lives. What about Vickery Environmental just outside of Clyde? The company pumps hazardous waste into deep wells. It's been a dumping ground since the 70s. Large red chemical clouds sometimes form over Vickery. Vickery says the clouds are non-toxic. The state says Vickery is not a problem. Waste management, who owns Vickery, won't talk on camera, but says state officials are the most knowledgeable to speak about this subject. You told her a week before she died. I would never let this go, and I won't. You will not. I will not.
Tomorrow night at 11, you're going to meet a four-year-old boy who's going to turn the state's investigation upside down. You won't want to miss what I just uncovered. It's going to change everything.